So why would I choose MinIO object storage instead of just going, you know, straight to AWS? Well, MinIO scales up. This is really the power of MinIO as a developer. Since Amazon S3 is the de facto standard for your object storage, it would be handy to be able to start writing my code with an S3 compatible backend for my data. But if I don't want to spend the money or I don't have access to the resources to use Amazon S3, I can use MinIO locally to actually implement that S3 compatible storage. And then I can develop my application. I can develop a proof of concept locally, very inexpensively, before then moving it to a different service. MinIO has very powerful data integrity built into it. You have all these data protection features. As a matter of fact, even if I'm running on a local system, I can have multiple drives working with MinIO, even locally. And if half of my drives die, I can still recover from that. So this means that the data integrity is built in from the get-go. I don't need to worry necessarily about backups. I don't need to worry about how the data is going to be replicated or stored. All of that data integrity is baked into MinIO from the get-go. And so now I'm using MinIO at my proof of concept stage, which means that as my data grows, I can become more complex. I can use a local Docker container for my proof of concept, maybe for some dev, maybe for some testing. And then I can go to a local cluster. I can go to my own on-prem data center, or I can even go to the cloud for production. And even better, I can move between clouds very easily using MinIO because I can deploy MinIO to any cloud provider. The data on my MinIO server is replicated, can be set up to be replicated. And the nice thing about this is that I have this active active setup available, which means that it doesn't matter where I'm writing the data to, it doesn't matter where I'm reading the data from, I can have access to all of that data. And if my application is dependent on that data being there, I can build in application failover from the start, simply by making sure that I'm communicating with MinIO, maybe through a load balancer as I start to scale up. And MinIO is designed to be secure from the ground up. You have good integration with several different identity providers that allow users or applications to authenticate and use the object storage without you having to spend a lot of time writing in a security layer. Additionally, everything with MinIO is designed to be secure from a TLS level from the get-go as well. So everything is designed for security, for integrity, and it's designed to scale with you as your application grows. This is a great tool for application developers. Everybody's data is eventually going to end up in the cloud. This is just the way the world works now. Your application is going to scale up and scale up and scale up, and you're going to have so much data that you're eventually going to need to be cloud-based. With MinIO, you can run locally, you can run on a smaller cluster internally. As your application grows, that gives you more collateral to, to bundle back into your application development. And when you actually reach the point that you need the cloud backend, you can have it without having to spend a lot of time re-architecting your application. That is a huge benefit. MinIO deployments are going to look something like this. Your application is going to talk to a load balancer for routing application requests to the MinIO hosts. And the reason why I bring this up is that this is really the best way to even start off. Yes, you can have just a single MinIO to do your proof of concept, but as you get to the point where you're getting ready to deploy, you want that load balancer in there and then some MinIO hosts behind it. But again, that doesn't mean you're gonna need to change a whole bunch of your code because the load balancer is really just passing through all of the S3 API calls. So all you're really doing with your application is changing where it points to. The S3 API layer is then going to talk to these MinIO hosts, each MinIO server, has a complete picture of how its topology is distributed. So if I have four different systems running MinIO and each of those systems has four different drives, now I've got 16 different drives, each of which may have a piece of the data that I'm working with, 
but each individual MinIO server knows where all of that data is. So you can connect to any node in the deployment. Now, what does this mean to you? If a server goes down, as long as I'm using the load balancer, I have automatic failover. Even if half the drives disappear, my data is still intact. Your application can start with a very simple MinIO deployment and grow with ease because you're not having to go back and recode to go to S3. You literally start your application development with S3 in mind and are able to deploy it with an S3 compatible data layer at whatever scale. There's a few different MinIO deployment types that we're gonna take a look at here. The first one is the one that we're gonna be working with in our labs, and that is a single node, single drive. Now, what you do not get with a single node, single drive is any kind of failover. I hope that that's intuitive to folks. If there's only one drive and the drive fails, I'm sorry, your data is gone. But it does give you versioning and object locking. So you do get the basic features already available to you. So if you're building an application that relies on versioning, great. If you're building an application that relies on locking, great. Now, in a proof of concept, that's probably all I'm looking for. If I need versioning, I'm going to put it in the proof of concept. If I need locking, I'm going to put it in the proof of concept. So the single node, single drive, it's there. This availability and redundancy, all that other stuff, that is something that's gonna come up later as your application grows. And also, not something that you need to specifically code for. Now you're gonna to have to code for versioning, you're gonna to have to code for locking, but you do not need to code for availability or redundancy because that's all handled automatically by MinIO. That said, if your laptop blows up, you are gonna have some downtime and you're gonna have some data loss. So obviously this is not something you're gonna do in production, but it is great for that proof of concept for that first example of your application. A single node with multiple drives does give you replication. It allows you to expand. You can even add more drives as you go. You have drive level redundancy and availability. It's not gonna be in the cloud. You're not gonna have host level redundancy. If you lose the node, because there's one node, that's a single point of failure. If you lose it, you will again have some downtime or loss. I would say that you could probably get away with this for your beta deployment of your application. But when you finally go to a real production, you're gonna wanna have a distributed layout, multiple nodes, multiple drives. This is where you're gonna start seeing your load balancer come in. But again, you shouldn't have to change a bunch of your code because if you coded it for versioning and locking and data retrieval at the single node, single drive, all of that stuff still works at the multi-node. Hopefully the only thing you're gonna to have to change is where it connects to, connect to the load balancer rather than a specific host. And again, you can lose up to half of the nodes or the drives in the deployment and you will still have all of your data.